Hey, I'm Joe. I'm Nick. And we're doing something incredible this morning, driving a Lancia Delta Futurista, and it's right behind us. I actually have one of these for a while. Um, and, uh, oh, somewhat, apparently, uh, okay. Is that Magnus Walker? Apparently Magnus wants to go for a drive. All right then, I guess we'll catch up with the car later. Later, get up. Today's episode takes us to Monterey Car Week, where Motorhead's wildest dreams come true in one of the most beautiful spots in the world. Cars you'd never imagine seeing on the open road are pretty much everywhere you look. The endless parade of McLarens and Paganis and Ferraris and even a Bugatti Chiron with a rooftop carrier parked in a handicapped spot becomes commonplace by day two. But certain once in a lifetime cars like what we're driving today still stand apart. Nick and I know the original classic Lancia Delta Integrale very well and has a special place in our hearts as we shot our first ever Car Crush episode with my 1994 Evo 2, which I've since sold. And yeah, that might have been a bad idea. Our very special guest star, the man with the beard, Magnus Walker, got to know the car making his awesome film, Big Apple Outlaw. Link in the top right of your screen. Excerpts of our wrap-up show together appear throughout the episode, but stay tuned till the end if you want to catch the whole thing. So how does the $350,000 Automobili Amos Lancia Delta Futurista the modern day two-door reinterpretation of the 90s four-door classic stack up against the original? Thanks to our friends at Isimi, we'll soon find out with a very thorough thrashing through the sublime and heavenly Carmel Valley Road. So the car that I'm driving debuted in 2018. 20 examples of this car were made and they all sold out really, really quickly. Such was the high demand, double wishbone suspension all round four-wheel drive, five-speed, two-liter turbo, making approximately 300 horsepower. It is kind of busy on the layout. All these, what am I counting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like eight gauges. So it's kind of hard to know what you're focusing on with where is the boost, what is my RPM. So I'm gonna rely on seeing the panels feel. Turbo delivery does remind me a little bit of an old 930 turbo when it is so raw. It's, it's not the smoothest turbo delivery. Okay, the throttle is easy to modulate the boost. The car does shift really pretty well. The brakes feel slightly spongy, but it's not adequately. The steering is super direct. The positions, what I call the typical Italian. Now I want the wheel further back, but I can't get it further back. My head's hitting the roof, but that's not actually stopping me having fun. The seat's moving around a little bit, but I'm just wanting a little bit more open road to keep my foot planted all the way down, pedal to the metal style. Are we stopping? the type of road that this car was made for. Tight, twisty, undulating. Like a Route B rally road. Just make it feel like you're in your favorite rally racing group in the 70s and 80s. It inspires a lot of confidence in a short period of time where you get comfortable and you feel like you're up to speed to push that car. Uh, all happened in the first 30 seconds once we yeah. got away from traffic and we floored it. I was impressed how well that car drove. You know, the suspension, the compliance over that uneven stuff, it really, for me, made me want to push it a little bit harder. And I felt that car was better the harder you pushed it. It did make you feel like, you know, you were in your own you know, Group B rally. But, you know, for the, for the moments when I was in the zone going through the gears, 
the steering was direct and tight it was great over that undulation the brake was a little spongy i thought when it stopped i loved the way it shifted and the fact that you could heel and toe you could left foot brake it was hard to get that car on balance i thought you know through the gears and just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Apart from the fact that I think the speedo isn't kilometers, right? You're, you're never quite sure how, how fast you're going, but it is just, it's one of those cars that you drive it, it's like, it's like it, it's plugged into the back of your spine. Like you just, it's the seat of the pants. It, and you just, it just makes you feel just alive and reminds you just like, just how much you love driving. Dude, this car is just like. You love it? You could sell everything. This is Delta on steroids. I mean, you can just fucking pitch this car into turns. I mean, Joe's old Integrale was sort of the same way. This is probably a little better. I don't know that it's... 250 grand better. Man, it sounds crazy.
love this a lot. So I really hate modern cars now because they're too good and they're too safe and they're too precise and they're too fast. For example, that new GT3 RS that just came out. Well, who's gonna be able to drive that? Nobody. The people that can drive it can't afford it. And the people that can afford it can't drive it. So they're just gonna take it to Cars and Coffee and show you how big their dick is. And it's a shame because this is amazing. Fuck. I never swear this much. I also usually talk a lot more, but I don't really want to. I just want to drive. This is what a car is supposed to feel like sound like stop that scrape it seems to grip really well yeah. where whereas his car the old integrale um, there is a lot of understeer and this car there's no understeer and you can kind of actually kick the back out which I wasn't going to do with a four hundred thousand dollar car that's not mine oh. Honestly, this is probably the most fun I've had in a car in a very long time. Oh, this is why I don't care about electric cars. This road is incredible! You're right, California is the greatest. <laughs> Definitely too much taxes, but... I'm okay with a little higher taxes. Yeah. It's a convenience fee for not living in Texas. God, I know. I agree. Alright, I can chill now. That was what I needed. Last camera action, take one, the wrap up. <laughs> so as we wait for our, uh, our entrees, our huevos rancheros, uh, I mean, all of us have a bit of experience with the car. Um, I guess just dive in. I mean, I think it, it took, it, the first thing I thought when I got in the car is I shouldn't have sold mine. And well, then- that's a, that's a good thing. You know, and then I remembered all the stuff about it that I, all the reasons why I sold it. And the main reason is it just, it was underpowered. It didn't sound great. And it felt really fragile. Like I always felt like I was, that and the fact that mechanically it wasn't, it did, just didn't seem like a terribly robust car. It seemed sort of surprisingly it had been world rally champions because I, I always felt like it was about to snap in half. That's how I felt with Phil's, you know, Mr. Enthusiast with his Bastarda, you know, the big Apple Outlaw car. I felt like this car would be great if it had a hundred more horsepower. I didn't mind that it wasn't loud. Phil made his even louder because, you know, he's a real Bastarda yeah. hooligan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just seemed like it lacked a little bit of umph. The new car delivers on that, for sure. Yeah, and the sound that you're hearing is just the, the, the turbo and the wastegate and the constant. Yeah, it's pretty addictive. Pretty well, addictive. and if you get it into about 35 to 4,000 RPMs and kind of hold it there, you can hold the spool and just yeah. keep that sound. Uh, linear, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. I've never experienced before. Yeah, like Sounds you like can keep the blow off just like. It feels like you're being shot out of an air gun, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, amazing. Psh. 
My favorite bit was bouncing off the rev limiter in second, though. Like, that car to me wasn't comfortable under 3,000 RPM in second. Fl there are also flames coming out of the back of your car. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's always good. We, flames, got yeah. we got flames going that, in Well, second. people do love flames. That's like hellfire <laughs> for sure. But I was impressed how well that car drove. You know, the suspension, the compliance over that uneven stuff, it really, for me, made me want to push it a little bit harder. And I felt that car was better the harder you pushed it. It did make you feel like, you know, you're in your own uh, Group B rally. But, you know, for, mm -hmm. the, for the moments when I was in the zone going through the gears, the steering was direct and tight. It was great over that undulation. The brake was a little spongy, I thought, but it stopped. I loved the way it shifted and the yeah, fact that you could yeah, heel yeah. and toe, you could left foot brake. Right. It was hard to get that car unbalanced, I thought. You know, there's a lot of mechanical grip, that four wheel drive put the power down, coming out of corners if you caught it on boost right. So I think for me, that car loves to live above 4,000 RPM. That's and what awesome. about the turning radius? Not a great turning <laughs> radius, you know. That's then, why the tires don't run, though. Yeah, the tires don't, don't run. They don't turn to full lock. And, and yeah. any U turn is about a 34 point U turn. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for me, I, I kind of feel visually the car is slightly unbalanced. Like it's too wide on the front, not wide enough on the back. Or maybe they should have made the rear slightly wider, the front slightly narrower. Because it's really boxy on the front and really it's wider on the front than it is on the rear. It does stick out more in the front than on the rear. Uh, but when you're when, exactly what you're talking about, when you're going into the corners and, and you can really just pitch it in and throw it in, it seems to grip really well. Yeah. Where, whereas his car, the old Integrale, um, there is a lot of understeer. And this yeah. car, there's no understeer. Right. And you can kind of actually kick the back out, which I wasn't going to do with a $400,000 car that's not mine. But it's only well, 450 now. 450. Why not? Is it really? Something like that, yeah. That's, that's, a, lot. that's a lot. That's an expensive piece of kit, yeah. So I don't know if that wider front has eliminated uh, that understeer problem um, that's, that's in the ego. But it definitely felt a lot. You could throw it in a corner way faster than I could throw your car in a oh, corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. It yeah. inspires a lot of confidence in a short period of time where you get comfortable and you feel like you're up to speed to push that car. Uh, all happened in the first 30 seconds once yeah. we got away from traffic. Once you got above 4,000 RPM space. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, I, mean, well, I think that's what the, the, the fun with the Evo 2 was you always felt as if you were literally driving the wheels off of it. Well, and yeah, you're just, and you, off you're of literally it. just thrashing the nuts right. off of it. Right. Whereas in this, it's like the car all the time is like, give me a little more, give me a little more, give me a little more. Yeah. I thought suspension is just, if there's one thing that is, I mean the power, of course, but the suspension, it like, it transforms that car. Mm -hmm. um, it's like an ideal package where it's not so much power that it's actually scary, but yet it's usable power, I found. And I think that's like the It's controllable sweet power. Spot. Yeah, it's unusable though, where yeah, you yeah, can yeah, yeah, keep yeah, yeah. your foot planted. Exactly. There's a lot of these cars that might have double the horsepower, but you never experience nine tenths of that performance. I feel like we experienced eight or nine tenths of the performance of that car today in a short period of time to the best of our ability. So we should like, you know, if we can get them down to, let's say, 400, you know, that puts it at what, like 130? Or if you're going equal, I suppose. Thousand yeah. each. So I did you... bottom out a few times the front splitter, so that at least took 200 grand off the, oh, the yeah, tank. Yeah. So it did. It we should throw them an offer now. There you go. It held up pretty well, though. Hey, this front splitter is bullet ruined. <laughs> yeah, I actually it's ruined. I actually didn't. I didn't scrape or feel the car bottoming out once. So um, I did a lot. So maybe I'm a bad driver. Maybe you're maybe just, you're just going faster. Than <laughs> than <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I felt bad at the end, and then. Richard was like, don't worry about it. It's fine. You're, you're not hurting the car. And I was like, okay. All right. Well, you're well, hurting no, the He's, he's not hurting the car. But the cool thing about just, you know, bringing that car through the gears and just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, apart from the fact that I think the Speedo was in kilometers, right? I you're you're never quite that. sure how, how fast you're going, but it is just, yeah. it's one of those cars that you drive it. It's like, it's like it, it's plugged into the back of your spine. Like you just. It's the seat of the pants. It, and sure. you just, it just makes you feel just alive and reminds you just like, just how much you love driving. How much headroom did you have in that car? To me, it takes a little bit of getting used to that type of seating you position. Take a, take your hat I took the hat off, but my head was on the headliner. So I had headroom, but the first thing that kind of threw me off when I sat in the car was exactly what you're talking about the seating position. I, my arms yeah, were coming yeah. down on the car where right. you're like, which felt really awkward at first. I got used to it, but it definitely felt weird 
and the, disorienting. Right, I get it. Don't yeah. feel natural. Yeah. And there's a lot of distractions I feel. There's eight gauges and a bunch of switches. And there's like a light. I know, but I kind like, of love the like weird quirky Italianness of it, where it just like doesn't really fucking make sense. Yeah. <laughs> and just, I like, mean, like I just want to see the button. rev counter. That's all <laughs> yeah. I want to see. Then you were telling me it showed you digitally output what gear you're in. I never yeah, even saw that. Oh, okay, I didn't see that. Did you see that? No, I didn't. That little counter in the middle is is letting you know letting you know what gear you're in. But oh, I think I if, depending that. upon what angle you're looking at the readout from, it's it kind of, it's like an old Casio digital it's like watch. A, yeah, a Texas yeah. Casio <laughs> exactly. calculator yeah. from the 80s. Exactly. exactly. All I saw was eight, and I know it doesn't have eight gears. Right. But I guess it was zero. But I do love the way that thing shifts. Same. I didn't love the brake pedal feel, but I love the way, I just kept wanting to go through gears. Mm -hmm. Third, fourth, fifth, mm -hmm. up and down. Second, I was between third. second and third a lot on those turns, even, yeah. though, even where I absolutely didn't need to shift. Bouncing was, off the rev yeah, limiter? Yeah, yeah, I was shifting a lot. Yeah. Fun. Well, gents, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Great day of driving. That's it. It's a fun day for me. Awesome. Appreciate the opportunity. Like and subscribe, everybody. Isn't this oh. invigorating? Like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you, you got to weave it in. All right, weave way. it in. Whoa, that's organic. <laughs> You are the former PI guy, I get it. Go. Yeah, like and subscribe. What is it? Car Crush? Yeah, the Car yeah. Crush. Well, hopefully they're watching if they're at YouTube. So oh, hopefully. Hopefully. Well, you guys are filmmakers. Are we right? are filmmakers. We're not YouTubers. We're again. about to hire a cinematographer. Well, yes, we are a cinematographer. <laughs> well, that's impressive. Photo first. No big deal. Well, thanks for allowing me to be the third wheel. Thank you for coming along. Anytime. My pleasure. You're welcome. Alrighty. All right, let's see. Cool. Cut.